Wild Dixie here. There are a couple pairs of trail runners that I tried earlier on this year and I just realized I haven't reported back to you. So today I want to let y'all know how the Zero Terraflex and the Topo Athletic TerraVenture 3s worked out for me. I tried out the Zero Terraflex Trail Runner during my through hike of the Foothills Trail and I was actually really excited because I've never tried a barefoot style shoe before. The Terraflex is a zero drop shoe that's designed to be super flexible and allow you to feel the world. These shoes would also be pretty cool for somebody who hates wearing socks because they are smooth on the inside and actually designed in a way that if you prefer to not wear socks, you can do that. I wanted to test out the no sock thing while I was on the Foothills Trail, but because the temperatures were pretty cool, with it being the fall and all, I wanted that extra insulation on my feet to keep them warm. The TerraFlex is also a low profile shoe, if you will. They only have a 12 millimeter stack height, which is about half of what I'm used to wearing in a trail runner. I actually had somebody tell me recently after my introduction video of this Zero Terraflex that they preferred the Zero Terraflex over other trail runners because it wasn't so platformy and they felt like they rolled their ankle less because of the lower stack height. I do like how lightweight the Terraflexes feel. A men's nine weighs in at 9.6 ounces, which is a little bit lighter than some of the other trail runners I've used. Also, they were quick to dry and they do have a wider toe box than some trail runners. I also think it's pretty cool how you can adjust the fit of the shoe with the little V straps that they have. It's just straps that aren't stitched in that you can cinch down rather than kind of cranking down on the shoelaces, which if you have a narrow feet like me, sometimes I've had to do that. When I mentioned I was gonna try the Zero TerraFlex, several people voiced the concern that I should probably slowly transition into them. And I think that is recommended for a Zero Drop type shoe or a barefoot type shoe. But thankfully I didn't have any issues even though I kind of threw myself to the wolves with them. But I am used to a Zero Drop shoe, so I think my calves are stretched out enough for that and the nerves in my feet are probably pretty much dead from just walking on them so much but it is something to keep in mind and is probably the best idea for moving to a barefoot shoe you do definitely feel the world as they say with the TerraFlex, and for me it was a little uncomfortable on the foothills trail in particular because the foothills trail is such a rooty trail there were just miles and miles of walking on roots and because there isn't much rigidity to the bottom of the trail runner, just the way sometimes my feet would hit the roots was just not as comfortable if I had had a more rigid sole. I did find myself a couple of times missing my more cushiony and rigid trail runners. So while I appreciate the barefoot idea, I don't know that it's necessarily for me. But just because something works for me or doesn't work for me, doesn't mean that it will work or not work for you. So if this idea piques your interest, I do think that the Zero TerraFlex is a good quality shoe. It seems well made, pretty durable, and is also a reasonable price at $110. Also, as a side note, they have a 5,000 mile warranty on the soles. So if you wear down the sole to less than one millimeter in either the heel or the ball of your foot, they will replace the shoe that you have for 60% off. Now I feel like the upper is gonna fall apart before you ever wear the sole area down to one millimeter, but at least maybe you find some comfort in knowing that this company does back their product. Now moving along to the TerraVenture 3s, I tested this pair of trail runners out during my hike this summer in the Grand Tetons. The TerraVenture 3s have a stack height of 25 millimeters in the heel and 23 millimeters in the toe, so they're actually not a zero drop shoe, which is the type of trail runner that I typically prefer, but with only a three millimeter drop, that's still pretty shallow in the world of athletic footwear. The TerraVenture 3s are a breathable trail runner with most of the upper being made out of mesh, so they will dry quickly. And they are built with a rock plate and a Vibram sole, so it's definitely more sturdy and protective against rocks and roots. Now, although this shoe is more rigid, protective, and cushiony, 
A men's nine only weighs 10.2 ounces, so that's only 0.6 ounces more than the Zero Terraflex. So they're still a pretty lightweight shoe. The Terra Venture threes are in the same typical price range as other trail runners at $125. I wanted to try the Terra Venture threes because I loved the Terra Venture twos so much on my through hike of the Florida Trail. I liked that they were cushiony and rigid, so they helped protect my feet on the road walks but also they weren't so clunky to where I couldn't feel what I was walking on on trail. I feel like the TerraVenture 3s are a little less cushiony than the TerraVenture 2s were, but they're still more cushioned and comfortable than the Ultra Lone Peaks. My biggest complaint about the TerraVenture 2s when I got them is that they didn't have a great color selection. They were just ugly. At least the men's were. They may have had some more exciting colors or less pukey colors in the women's but women's trail runners just typically aren't long enough for my feet so i go with the men's but thankfully in the terra venture threes they corrected that and they do have some better colors they're, they're improving it does seem that from the transition of the terra venture twos to the threes that they've narrowed the toe box a little bit. And I don't understand why shoe companies do that. Ultra did the same thing. They'll come out with this trail runner that's awesome and allows your toes not to crowd each other and to just kind of splay out in there. And then as the designs progress, they kind of narrow it down. And I agree that a super wide toe box isn't very attractive. It makes you look like you're wearing clown shoes, but I care more about being comfortable on trail than the way that I look. So just let me be Bozo the Clown already. Overall, I do love the Topo Athletic Terra Venture 3s. I will probably try Topo Athletic's Run Ventures, mainly because that's their zero drop shoe and I kind of want to give it a spin. I think it's going to be less cushioned than the Terra Venture 3s, but still more protective than say the Zero Terraflex or the Ultra Lone Peak. All right, y'all, that is all I have for you today. If you have any questions about the Zero Terraflex Trail Runners or the Topo Athletic Terra Venture 3s, please feel free to leave those questions in the comments below, or especially if you've used either the Zero Terraflex or the Topo Athletic Terra Venture 3s. Gosh, that's a mouthful then I would love to hear your thoughts on whether you really like them or you really don't, because sharing that information helps other people who are on a search for the perfect trail runners for their feet. Everybody's feet are unique, so it's not a one size fits all type thing. And I think the more opinions that are out there and why you like what you do can certainly help somebody else. So, Anyway, thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe before you go, and we will see y'all next time.